Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. 34 Air Force missile officers suspended for ethics violation, and we found one officer who may be to blame. The Obama administration persecutes Christians at a record pace in the military, and both Super Bowl quarterbacks are born again Christians. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and this is PIJN News. On this show, we like to discern the spirits and we pray the scriptures, but first let's report the news. Our first story today quotes ABC News who reports that 34 United States Air Force nuclear missile officers were caught in a cheating scandal that also involved an OSI investigation of possible drug abuse. The officers' certifications were revoked and they were relieved of their nuclear launch duties and responsibility because of ethics failures. ABC News reports that all 34 nuclear missile launch officers were implicated in a cheating scandal and they were stripped of their certification and now this is the largest breach of integrity in the nuclear force perhaps in history. Some of the officers apparently texted each other the answers to a monthly test on their knowledge of how to operate the nuclear missiles. Others may have known about it but failed to report it. The cheating scandal was discovered during a drug investigation that involves 11 Air Force officers across six bases in the US and England. Of the three missile launch officers involved in the drug scandal, two are at Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana, one is at F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Wyoming. The two at Malmstrom are also implicated in the cheating scandal, which led to the investigation and now has caused the largest controversy for service members who maintain and operate the nation's 450 nuclear missiles. Well, this, this month here in January of 2014 isn't the first time it happened. It also happened in May of last year, 2013. There was another scandal when Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel removed 17 missile launch officers from duty at a nuclear missile base in North Dakota over what a commander called rot in the force. Hagel admitted the problem after Associated Press reported willful violations of safety rules, including possible compromise of launch codes, and that was tolerated. Our thanks to ABC News for that report. Full disclosure, I was an Air Force missile officer. In fact, I spent five winters in Minot, North Dakota. I had my finger on the nuclear button. I had a top secret clearance before I went on to become a Navy chaplain. And when I was a chaplain in the Navy, I taught ethics. Well, this reminds me of a different scandal that we had at Vandenberg Air Force Base just a couple years ago when the Just War Theory lectures on ethics were revoked. Do you know they're no longer teaching ethics training at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California? Let's see, what happens when you stop teaching ethics training to missileers? Maybe they're sent up to the units in Minot and Montana and, and Wyoming and they don't have any ethics because they weren't taught any ethics at the missile school. Well, okay, let's do a little investigation. Why are they no longer teaching ethics training to missile officers, or at least the just war theory? Because this man, Mikey Weinstein, complained that the ethics lectures were too Christian because they might have quoted St. Augustine. Oh my gosh, well, who's Mikey Weinstein? He's the guy who's threatening lawsuits against the Air Force. By the way, he's always lost his lawsuits that I'm aware of. But Mikey says this, we're at war with a subset of evangelical Christianity. 12.6% of the population are 38 million people. He hates Christians so much that he attacks them in the military. And he accused the Vandenberg uh, Missile Training School of teaching ethics to their missileers. So you know what they did? They caved in, they let Mikey have his way, they stopped teaching ethics to our missileers. And now look what's happening. Now we have two major ethics breaches. One fired 17, now this one's firing 34. Well, who is in charge of the Vandenberg Air Force training? It's this Colonel, Michelle Johnson, of the 381st Training Group. I put in a phone call this today to her training group and I spoke with her deputy, Lieutenant Colonel Wakefield. Their response, no comment. 
And I asked him, why aren't you teaching ethics to our missileers? Doesn't that cause the rot in the ranks that's contributing to the problem? No comment. So I'm publishing their phone number now. I want you to call this Colonel on the carpet. And I wonder, I want you to ask her this question. Colonel Michelle Johnson, uh, excuse me, Michelle Edmondson, do you have the courage that it takes to stand up to people like Mikey Weinstein? Do you have the courage that it takes to reinstate the ethics lectures? To teach just war theory to our missileers? Or at least let the chaplains come in and do that? At least make it optional? How are you gonna restore and, re, and the missile force and stop the rot in the ranks, we've got to teach ethics. So Lieutenant Colonel Michelle Edmondson, I wonder if you have as much courage as the three star at the Air Force Academy, Lieutenant Colonel Michelle Johnson. She stood up to Mikey Weinstein. She kept so help me God in the pledge, the cadet honor oath. She's not afraid of a little atheist complainer. She's more concerned with our national security. And I wonder, Colonel Michelle Edmondson, are you also concerned with our national security? Ladies and gentlemen, here is her phone number, 805-606-4315. If you're a viewer and you care about this, I want you to call, 805-606-4315. Now, that phone number won't ring after hours, but you have to do it Monday through Friday during business hours. So get a pencil, write down this phone number, or hit rewind, 805-606-4315 805-606-4315 and ask Colonel Michelle Edmondson, why are you afraid of Mikey Weinstein? Are you a coward or are, do you have the chutzpah? Do you have the courage to stand up like Lieutenant General Michelle Johnson did and put Mikey in his place, restore the ethics lectures, teach our missileers our national security depends on it. God bless you, Colonel Michelle Edmondson. The Bible says this in 2 Timothy 3, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, the Obama administration is continuing to persecute military Christians. You don't wanna miss this next video. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we'll fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that. But did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm encouraging you today to call Colonel Michelle Edmondson at this phone number, 805-606-4315, and ask her if she has the courage to defend the Constitution against his domestic enemies like Mikey Weinstein, does she have the courage or is she a coward? I'm just asking, I'm not making any accusations. In fact, I welcome you, Colonel Michelle, to appear on this show by Skype, 
to send out your public affairs director. I talked to John Sheets, who's at Global Strike Command Public Affairs Office. No comment. Why aren't you teaching ethics training to our missileers? Well, in our next story, maybe we have part of the answer. Does it start at the highest office in the land? President Barack Obama strongly opposes religious freedom for our troops, he said. He strongly opposed uh, NDAA amendment to let troops have religious freedom. And here is now a study conducted by the Family Research Council under the guise of a clear and present danger. They got some on duty, active duty Air Force officers who say they're no longer allowed to uh, mention their Christian faith. Now Jesus is suddenly a taboo word. You can't talk about your religion in the military. What's this about? Let's watch some of these videos. Soldiers give up a, a lot of privileges or rights to be soldiers and defend the freedoms of others. But certainly, the free exercise of religious faith is not one of them. I'm speaking out uh, on this issue because I believe it's important uh, for Americans and for Christian Americans in particular, American Christians, to understand what exactly is going on in, inside the military. I served in the United States Army for over two decades. I serve in the United States Army. I've been a member of the military for 25 years. Personally, I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and so faith in place, a big part of my life. The oft quoted phrase, there are no atheists in foxholes, uh, contains a profound element of truth. The military profession is different from all other professions in that people are risking their lives and putting their lives on the line for another. Faith for men and women in combat situations is important because it helps them to understand the things that they experience. The threats to religious liberty in the military are getting much, much worse. There is a tremendous culture of intimidation and fear in the ranks of the American military right now. I think in particular, Christian religious freedom has been a target. I could cite numerous examples. We have a soldier who gets reprimanded for serving Chick-fil-A at a promotion reception and uh, tweeting his support of the Fence of Marriage Act while it was still constitutional law. I know at least of one case directly where um, someone was really denied an assignment that probably would have been a preferential assignment because of their beliefs. I've seen it get progressively worse, particularly in the last four years. When I entered service 25 years ago, it just seemed to be a completely different place. I think religious freedom in, in the military is being eroded uh, over time, and it's become increasingly more difficult for believers to openly express themselves out of fear of the potential consequences to their careers. They appear to be bound and determined to eradicate the military and its heritage of any references to our Christian heritage and Christian beliefs. I think that the Army has undermined what they say are its values by replacing it with one overarching Army value, tolerance. When you're not allowed to have an opposing view. Uh, and if you have an opposing view, then your thoughts are detrimental to good order and discipline. It represents a clear and present danger to our military service to eradicate our forces from the Christian influence. In the military, we, we deal with life and death issues all the time. Um, do we want to create an environment where uh, someone uh, who is working with someone in a crisis situation is afraid to share what they believe because of the consequences uh, of what might happen to them if someone found out. I think we will see dire consequences if we don't work now to stop the repression of Christian faith, uh, particularly in the military. Liberty erodes over time, and uh, what begins in one part of, it, of, a, of a society will eventually bleed over to another. And it would be kind of naive for us to believe that if religious freedom was not tolerated within a military context, that it wouldn't somehow eventually affect the culture in a broader way. So I think it's important for us to, to speak our faith, 
to live our faith and to not back down. The American Christians have to understand that this is not gonna stop with the military. It's not gonna stop there. This kind of repression is crouching at the door of the American churches. And if they decide to do nothing, then they have only themselves to blame because they refuse to take action when action was warranted. It's important for us as Christians to step up to the challenge. Our thanks to FRC and militaryfreedom.org is their website, again, militaryfreedom.org. But yet another example of anti-Christian persecution last summer was encountered by Army Master Sergeant Nathan Somers, who was reportedly reprimanded by his commander in part because he read conservative books by authors like Sean Hannity and Mark Levin. Let's watch a short Fox News clip. An Army Marching Band member Nathan Somers is causing problems. Marching out of sync, nope. Was he singing off key? Nope, not that either. Sergeant Summers was reprimanded and told to stop reading Sean Hannity, Mark Levin, and David Limbaugh books while on the bus going to concerts. That's when a superior officer told him to stand down on those books, saying he was, quote, causing a unit disruption. Yeah. Folks, we're in the midst of the wussification of American men, and now the military going all PC is both disheartening and dangerous. Kimberly, I called... Um, Mr. Summers' lawyer, Navy Commander John Bennett mm -hmm. Wells, who said right. PC is taking over the military. Who we met before at the Republican National Convention, Correct. right? The attorney representing him. Um, yeah, this is very disconcerting to me because now you're going to, what, program our military and give them a suggested and approved reading list and they can't read or listen or watch a certain Americans that are expressing their beliefs. This is outrageous. They're, you know, we have these soldiers, the troops, fighting for our freedoms every day, and then President Obama is stripping them of their freedoms, telling them that they can't read this or they can't look at these materials. This is his administration. Hang in there, Juan. President Obama hang in there. Told Juan, Juan, hold on, He's hold on. Commander in I chief. spoke to uh, Commander Wells, and I said, well, why is uh, PC taking over the military, Ange? And he said the way things have been going, especially since President Obama put his people in power Thank in you. the military. Absolutely, and all you have to do is look at Fort Hood to see that. Um, it was political correctness that prevented Army psychologists from reporting Major Nadal Hassan. And then we have now 13 dead Americans. He's getting paid almost $300,000 in its workplace violence while the victims get nothing. Look, I, I think this is ridiculous. I don't think the, the military is a place for expression of any kind. Mm -hmm. um, it, but it does appear that he is facing the last form of discrimination, Eric, which is you're a Christian or you're a conservative. And that's he's being discriminated against. Yeah. Hey. Uh, now and our thanks to Fox News, the five for that analysis of Nathan Somers. Here's a scripture from 1 Peter 4. The Bible says, Do for, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come upon you to test you as if something strange were happening to you, but instead rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you're insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. If you suffer, don't let it be as a murderer, a thief, or other kind of criminal, or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear his name. Those who suffer on account of God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Let us pray, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray for religious liberty to be restored in the military, not only in the missile force, not only in uh, the persecution that's happening in the army or Nathan Somers in his conservative books. Father, bless all of our troops and God bless America with religious freedom that the liberties they sacrifice and sometimes die on foreign battlefields to give to others would be given to them. I pray this blessing in Jesus' name, amen. When we come back, did you know both Super Bowl quarterbacks are born again Christians? Making your voice heard in our nation's capital Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we'll fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support HR 343, this is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. 
Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that. But did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. To In Jesus Name, I'm Dr. Chaps. As Super Bowl 48 approaches, I think it's important to remember that football heroes are not gods. And as Christians in America, we do not worship sports or entertainment, but we should worship Almighty God, and we do that in Jesus' name. There seem to be two kinds of athletes in America, self-centered egomaniacs who want people to worship them, and Christ-centered, humble public servants who are athletes who do not want people to worship them. Last year, the controversy raged about Tim Tebow, was he too Christian? Well, good grief. This year, now the controversy is, takes a different form. Somebody showed these two Instagram images of two quarterbacks in the NFC Championship, Colin Kaepernick of the San Francisco 49ers and Russell Wilson of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, between these two quarterbacks, which one is self-centered and which one is Christ-centered or cares about his community? Here you see Russell Wilson, uh, with pictures of him with troops, with children in hospitals doing charity receptions. Colin Kaepernick, you see him with jet airplanes and fast cars and uh, his expensive shoes showing off his muscles. You decide which one is seeking worship. Well, here's a quote from Russell Wilson explaining that now he, as the Super Bowl quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks, is a born again Christian. I was a young kid, and I used to always go to church. I just, my parents used to always take me, and I, you know, I knew about God and stuff like that, but um, I was always playing sports, and I was so preoccupied with that in a part of my life, and I was kind of a bad kid. I was kind of a bad kid growing up. Um, you know, I had a dream one night. Um, you know, I was, at, I was at UVA football camp. It was Saturday night, and I was just, my parents were to pick me up on Sunday to go to church. And, um, I had a dream that my dad passed away, and that Jesus came into the room. And, and he was just, you know, basically knocking on my door saying, hey, you need to find out more about me. So that Sunday morning, I ended up going to church and that's when I got saved. Um, you know, it was um, either June or July when I was 14 years old. And I think that just that moment um, of when I realized that, you know, those dreams are really real. Because um, my dad ended up passing away, you know, six years later. So you just, I think that, that kind of got me through a lot of adversity. Um, like I said, I was kind of a bad kid. I used to beat up kids and bite kids and do stuff you know, all the time. But um, yeah, I realized that God had given me so much, so many talents and I wanted to you know, give him all the glory. He wanted to give God all of the glory for making use of his talents. The other quarterback in the Super Bowl, Peyton Manning of the Denver Broncos, wrote this in his book a few years ago titled Manning. Quote, like my dad, I make it a point when I speak to groups to talk about priorities. And so when, when it's school kids, I rank those priorities as faith, family, education, then football. For me generally, it had always been the big four, faith, family, friends, and football. And I tell them all that as important as football is to me, it can never be higher than fourth. My faith has been number one. In other words, God is number one. Since I was 13 years old and I heard from the pulpit on a Sunday morning in New Orleans, a simple question, if you died today, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? Cooper was there and Eli, my brothers, but it didn't hit them at the same time and the way that it did me. 
It was a big church and I felt very small, but my heart was pounding. The minister invited all those who would like the assurance through Jesus Christ to raise their hands, and I did. Then he invited us to come forward to take a stand and my heart really started pounding. And from there where we sat, it looked like a mile to the front, but I got up and I did it and I committed my life to Christ. And that faith has been most important to me ever since. You know, maybe you don't know the Lord Jesus the way that Peyton Manning and Russell Wilson do, but I wanna invite you to pray with me right now. And here's a scripture from Mark chapter nine. If anyone wants to be first, you wanna be great, you wanna be famous, you should become the servant and the least of all. Humble yourself right now. Would you pray with me? Let's pray together. And repeat these words along with me. Father in heaven, I turn away from my sin. I don't wanna be my own boss. I don't want all the glory for myself. But God, I want you to have all the glory. So I humble myself and I make Jesus the boss of my life. I turn away from sin and Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my sins through the way that you suffered on the cross. I receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and I pray in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. If you just prayed with me, call our toll-free prayer line, 866-Obey-God. Let's take a short break and we'll conclude the show. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Once your voice heard by multiple congressmen at FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for visiting our website today, PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says in Luke chapter three, if you have two tunics, you should share with him who has none. On tomorrow's show, we'll talk about the government of Israel has stopped issuing gas masks to its citizens. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.